Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Blender 2.82 and 3D printing. So if you have like an Elegoo Mars or an AnyCubic or any of the uh, 3D resin printers, the LCD resin printers or MSLA printers, uh, you probably are using uh, a slicer to slice your files. And when you're, when you're working with Blender, you're designing basically a model of something and it doesn't have hard edges. You're actually going in there and, and creating a very complex model, especially jewelry or like figurines or things like that, uh, characters, whatever. And if you want to 3D print them, there are things that you can do in Blender that help you determine whether or not your model is not going to print correctly. Now, one of the tools available is this 3D printing workshop here, this add-on that comes with Blender. And you can click on this and uh, select your model and then hit check all. And it'll run through this, this little checklist about whether or not your model is working good or not. And if it tells you that you have like overhanging faces, then that's something that, you know, if we try to make manifold and we try to fix, what's going to happen is um, it's going to distort your model and I'm just going to run through that and you can see man it really hammers the model so I'm going to undo that. Uh, that being said uh, we can try to do certain things on it to fix it but it doesn't really work all that well. Now one of the other things that you can do is select your model and look for open faces. Now that's not going to solve overhanging faces but it is going to show you if you have normals that are out of position. Normals being faces that point outward or um, in a direction of a surface instead of being flipped around and inverted incorrectly. And if you have uh, normals out of location, they'll show up as red marks. And I'll show you what I mean here. I'm just going to go ahead and add a box. So we'll add a mesh. Come over to Cube. And I'm going to slide this down. Okay, so basically all the faces on this cube are pointing outwards but if one of them was inverted and I can do I can do that by going to edit mode I can select this face and then I can do shift N and invert inside and then what you see we'll go back into object mode is that this face is not pointed in the correct direction it's actually pointed to the inside of the box and not the outside which is not correct so we can use this little face orientation tool to find those areas. And if I turn that off, you'll notice that my box looks fine, but it's really not. Now, if I try to export this box for 3D printing, it's going to actually have a problem. And I can fix that by doing face select, selecting my box, going into edit mode, hit shift N, and then press enter, go into object mode, and you can see that all the box is actually fixed. And you can do that with any model. Now what happens if you spend hours drawing up a design and you can't, you know, you don't have any inverted faces in this, there's nothing wrong with it, it looks normal, it renders normal, so if I come over here, rendered view, I'm actually getting a model that uh, looks good and that first indication of any of these faces being um, outside their normal space would be that uh, they would give you, you know, you'd see holes in your model, but in this case, I'm not seeing any. Now when I export a file for 3D printing, I take the, the object, and I'm going to come back over here to just that mode here. I take the object, we'll hide this little gemstone, and I export it by going to the file menu, come down to export, and then I'll export it as an OBJ file, and I'm just going to go into this various objects. We'll save it as a ladies 3D ring, uh, when I said selection only and then I'm going to export it as an object file. This way I can bring up my sheet 2 box slicer and I can import it into my slicer and this will be the same with any slicer but for sheet 2 box I'll come down to this little tab here open up and I'm going to look for that same object file and let's see desktop various models and there it is the ladies school ring 3 I'm going to open that up as a, it's an object file so I'll open it up and you can see now it's in my slicer and supposedly it looks good I'm just going to rotate this around the uh, the X rotation here but if I look closely I can see something really bad with this model the whole top looks like it has a hole in it and if I zoom in 
you can see, I can see right through the surface of that into the inside of the model. Now, if I see something like that, and I can see errors in the bottom here, you can see where the bottom looks all mixed mesh and my faces are out of place. Now, yes, a lot of you people would say go back and remodel it, but I'm going to show you a quick way to fix something like this because it's not going to print correctly. When you, if you try to print this, you're going to get all kinds of weird printing on your 3D printer. Nothing's going to come out right. And if you see this, you need to be aware of it. Let's just delete that and let's go back to Blender 2.8. Now, the quickest way to fix this is to take your model, instead of exporting it as an OBJ file, we're going to export it as an STL file. Now, I'll go to File, Export, STL, and we're going to call this, we're going to call this file ladiesring3.stl. I'm going to hit Selection Only, and where are we? We want to go to our desktop, various models, and then I'm going to export that just as an STL. <coughs> The reason I'm doing this is because when you export from Blender as an object file or you export it as an STL file, there are actually two different ways that Blender exports your model. The STL file will be created in a way that your model is created in a solid form. So if I look at my sheet two box slicer now, and let me bring that up, I can go and hit the open option, bring that up here and now we're going to see we have the object file here and we have the STL file here. I'm actually going to select both of them. I'm going to hit open and I'm going to show you what happens to both. So let's rotate this back along the x-axis and let's zoom out a little bit and you can see here now this model if I zoom around it it looks just like the way I created it. It has no printable errors in it but this model right here, the OBJ file, and you can see it right here, OBJ, still has the, o, the, the holes in it. Now that is not going to print. It has errors in the modeling. Those errors are not obviously visible, but by exporting it as an STL, I've actually cleaned up my model enough where when I print it, it's going to print very well. That is how I fix some modeling errors that I can't detect in Blender, uh, Blender 2.82. So keep that in mind if you're working with a 3D printer and how you can export that. Now, there's one other thing that if you want to, I'm going to delete this. And now I'm going to import that STL, file import, and I'm going to go to import STL. I'm going to come to my school ring 3 in my various models folder right there and I'm going to import that and you can see it brings it right back in. It's an STL file but the really cool thing is because the STL file has basically cleared up my surfaces I can now go back export this as an OBJ file just like this one and when I export it that we can double check in the sheet two box slicer we'll get rid of this OBJ file and I'm going to go import the one I just saved right here. Now we'll select that, we'll rotate it 90 degrees and you can see now my object file has no visible errors on it for 3D printing. It will slice and print very very well. So guys that's a little tip and a trick that if you run into issues in your slicer where you see really a lot of bad faces in your slicer, that's how you go about fixing them. So keep that in mind. I hope this video helped. If it did help, please give it a thumbs up. If you can, share my videos with other people that you might know are interested in this kind of thing. And anytime you want to be notified, you can subscribe if you're not a subscriber and hit that little not not notification bell and you'll be notified every time I upload a next video. Take care and have a good day, guys.